Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. What I'm going to share with you is a briefing on the academic matters at the Faculty of Engineering University Putra Malaysia for you to have some idea and views, some overview of the academic activities that we have at the faculty. So the content of the presentation for today is on the organizational structure of the Deputy Dean of Academic Office, uh, some information on outcome-based education, some introduction perhaps, on student ethics, academic matters, teaching evaluation or teaching assessment, industry and community relations and some information on student bodies. Organizational structure of our mm. office, Deputy Dean of Academy at the Faculty of Engineering. We have three divisions, uh, particularly uh, a, three units looking into three um, major role of the office. The first one is on academy, where we handle curriculum management, new student intake and admission, course registrations, lecture and final exam schedules, preparation of final exam, student record management, and also general administration of the academic matter. The other unit that we have under the office is student affairs and alumni affairs, where this is where the student activities are, are being handled, counseling services, student discipline, and also school cluster. We have another unit called Industry Training and Mobility Unit where we handle alumni activities, mobility programs, school cluster and also career talks. So this is the structure, the people who are uh, behind uh, the office, which is um, me, myself, the Deputy Dean, Professor Dr. Aliani Ismail, uh, my secretary, Puan Lailiana Samsudin, Head of Student Affairs and Alumni Affairs, Dr. Musab Abdul Raza. So perhaps you will see him more often um, regarding the um, student affairs. Dr. Nor Ain Kamsani is our Head of Industrial Training and Mobility Unit. And uh, Encik Muhammad Arif Johari is our Assistant Registrar. These are my staff, uh, Encik Fairul Azri Abdul Karim on, uh, as the Administration Assistant, Puan Encik Nora Abdullah, Administration Assistant, Puan Rosnita, also Administration Assistant, Puan Nor Nadia Amirah Isha, Administration Assistant of the Student Affairs Unit, Encik Muhammad Azmi Bakri, the Operation Assistant, and Encik Hazwani Halim as the Operation Assistant. I'm going to uh, introduce you to outcome-based education um, that we implement at all uh, the programs of the University of uh, at all the programs at the Faculty of Engineering where we emphasize on the outcomes skill as such, such as cognitive, psychomotor, effective and soft skills and these are measurable and uh, what we implement here is on student-centered learning at the uh, program level, uh, sometimes people call it PO, sometimes people call it PLO, but it means the same thing, program learning outcome or program outcomes. At the end of each program, immediately after you graduate, we have a set of program outcomes that we have to achieve. And the next thing is um, cost learning outcome or cost outcome. Some people call it CO, some people call it CLO. Well, this is uh, uh, the learning outcomes of each courses that you are taking at the Faculty of Engineering and also some uh, courses that may be offered by the other faculties would have uh, each individual course outcomes that we have to achieve at the end of the course, each course. Yeah? So all this has to be aligned where course outcomes contributes to the achievement of program outcomes and program outcomes contribute to the achievement of the uh, program educational objectives. In general, program, as I mentioned, program educational objectives um, of individual department can be found at the respective website. You just need to go through, but I will um, let you know in general what are the PEOs of the faculty. 
of each programs. Yeah. Uh, the first one is to prepare graduates with sufficient knowledge in the related field of engineering. Uh, we cater knowledge to the stage that the students have sufficient knowledge to work in engineering. Number two is to produce graduates who are creative and innovative as well as sensitive and responsible towards the society, cultures and environment. Other than knowledge, we also produce graduates who are creative and innovative as well as um, sensitive towards the uh, cultures, environment, and the society. And the third one is to produce graduates who are capable to work in advanced design and development at national and international level. Then, and this could include the students working in research and development arena. Program outcomes, as mentioned just now, is sometimes referred to program learning outcomes and it describes the what students are expected to know and be able to perform or attain by the time of graduation. This relates to the skills, knowledge and behavior attitude that students require to acquire through the program. At the moment, there are 14 program outcomes for the Bachelor of Engineering in UPM. As listed here, PO number one is to apply knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals, and an engineering specialization to the solution of complex engineering problems. PO number two, identify, formulate research literature and analyze complex engineering problems, reaching substantiated conclusions using first principles of mathematics, natural sciences, and engineering sciences. PO number three, Design solutions for complex engineering problems and design systems, components or processes that meet specified needs with appropriate consideration for public health and safety, cultural, societal and environmental considerations. PO number 4, design and conduct experiment. PO number 5, investigate complex problems using research-based knowledge and research methods including design of experiments, analysis and interpretation of data, and synthesis of information to provide valid conclusions. PO number 6, create, select and apply appropriate techniques, resources and modern IT engineering and IT tools, including prediction and modeling to complex engineering activities with an understanding of the limitations. Apply reasoning informed by contextual knowledge to access society, health, safety, legal and cultural issues and the consequent responsibilities relevant to the professional engineering practice. That will be PO number 7. Uh, PO number 8 is on understand the compact of impact of professional engineering solutions in societal and environmental context and demonstrate knowledge of and need for sustainable development. PO number 9, apply ethical principles and commit to professional ethics and responsibilities and norms of engineering practice. PO number 10, communicate effectively on complex engineering activities with the engineering community and with society at large, such as being able to comprehend and write effective report and design documentation, make effective presentations and give and receive clear instructions. PO number 11 is function effectively as an individual and as a member of all leader in diverse teams and in multiple multidisciplinary setting. PO number 12 demonstrate knowledge and understand of engineering and management principles and applies this to one's own work to manage projects and in multidisciplinary environments. PO number 13, identify basics and opportunities in entrepreneurship related to engineering. And PO number 14 is to recognize the need for and have the preparation and ability to engage in independent lifelong learning in the broadest context of technological change. So as you see, there are 14 POs that covers the knowledge, skills and behavior of students when you complete the program at the end of the program. Number three, student ethics. As Albert Camus, the philosopher said, a man without ethics is a wild beast loose upon this world. And this is a pretty important 
um, thing that we uh, you as students should embrace eh? you know see and you know see college act 1971 on attire during lectures all students shall always be properly attired and shall always observe his manner while being on campus and during lectures please wear attire properly according to the act academic matters what students should be aware of as i mentioned uh, the university and university college act of 1971 section b you should um, uh, be aware of the registration part now that you are a student at university putra malaysia so in the university act um, uh, number nine add drop and change course where it mentioned that a student who wishes to make changes to the registration of course of studies may make the changes in the first week of the beginning of the following semester in accordance with the mode prescribed by these rules. A student who wishes to add a course of studies shall comply with the provisions below. A. A student who wishes to add courses of studies less than 20 credit hours shall obtain um, endorsement of the academic advisor. So, if you want to add courses of studies less than 20 credit, you need to uh, obtain endorsement as well. But if you want to apply to uh, additional uh, courses, uh, uh, credit courses exceeding 20 credit hours, then you should also uh, shall, obtain, uh, shall obtain endorsement of the academic advisor and therefore obtain approval of the dean. And um, clause number C, Subject to sub rule 2A, which is the um, less than 20 credit hours, a student who has obtained the endorsement of the academic advisor and the teacher teaching the relevant course to add the course of studies and has obtained the approval of his dean shall add the approval additional course of studies within two weeks, eh? two weeks after the following semester begins. So uh, please be aware of these um, requirements to add drop and change course. Uh, number three, a student who wishes to drop a course which has been registered successfully then shall comply with the following provision that is, a student who wishes to drop a course of studies shall drop the set of courses within uh, the first week and the second week of the 10th semester and shall drop the course of studies through System Maklumat Raja or ESMP. Yeah? So please be aware that... Um, uh, students uh, who wishes to drop uh, a course of studies which has been registered, if you register and you want to drop the course, it is permitted to do so from the beginning of the first week of the following semester until the seventh week of the same semester. Hmm? So, but if you want, if you should, if you wish to drop the course, then you shall pay um, a fine of fifty ringgit um, after the beginning of the second week of the semester. Huh? A student who fail to drop courses of studies which have been registered but do not attend the courses during the whole semester shall be given a grade F for the said courses at the end of the semester. So be careful. If you register a course, you can um, drop it, uh, drop the course, but uh, you have to register the drop of the course in the system. Not to, uh, not to miss the class. But if, if you miss the class for the whole semester, you'll be given uh, F, uh, fail. Uh. A student is not allowed to make changes to the registered courses of studies after the seventh week of semester. So be careful of, be aware of the uh, time, uh, uh, the week for you to drop courses. This is on attendance to academic activities. Pretty important, huh? Eh? Uh, very strictly um, followed here in UPM, where if a student shall uh, a student shall attend not less than eighty percent of the total hours of the academic activities of his registered course of studies, eighty percent you have to commit to eighty percent of the total hours of the academic activities. Huh? Uh, uh, and if you do not comply to this, um, the the students may be huh? maybe. Uh, banned from but from sitting the final examination of the course of the studies and the student shall be given zero mark for the final examination of the course of studies. Permission to sit 
for examination. Huh? Uh, like I mentioned before, um, if the 80% of attendance in academic activities has not been fulfilled, you can apply for um, permission to sit for the final examination if the dean of the faculty uh, which offer the course of studies is satisfied that, that the attendance is below than 80% is due to health problems based on medical reports or to any other reasonable, ex reasonable excuse which is not related to health problems. The dean of the faculty shall inform the registrar whether he is satisfied with the reason given under paragraph 1A or 1B. Uh, so if you have not fulfilled the 80% requirements, you can apply uh, for permission to sit for examination with reasons, health reasons or reasons reasonable uh, that can be considered. So, which departments you belong to? So, know your departments. You may know your departments, but you need to know the other departments as well. So, we have eight engineering departments here in, at the Faculty of Engineering. Aerospace Engineering, some, uh, we usually call it KAA, is in Bahasa, Kejusteraan Aero Angkasa. Uh, Civil Engineering, KAW. Biological and Agricultural Engineering, KBP. Electrical and Electronic Engineering, KEE. Chemical and Environmental Engineering, KKA. Computer and Communication Systems Engineering, KKK. Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, KMP. Process and Food Engineering, KPM. All of the programs are accredited by Engineering Accreditation, Accreditation Council Malaysia and look up for the, um, uh, the total number of credits required for the graduation and uh, please be aware of the credit uh, requirements. Eh? Credit hours, what does it mean? In AC manual, for a 14-week semester not including examination or midterm break, one credit hour is defined as uh, one hour per week of lecture. This is additional independent study of two hours is assumed to have been included. Two hours per week of laboratory or workshop lecture. Two hours per week of supervised and compulsory tutorial session, if any, if there is any tutorial session being conducted. Three hours per week of facilitated activities, including uh, other modes of delivery, such as problem-based learning, e-learning, uh, site visits, and so on and three hours per week of activities involving final year project inclusive of meeting with supervisor. So where, uh, that's what the credit hours means, the learning time for you to, uh, it, it relates to the learning time for you to complete the course. Huh? For academic semester, 14 weeks of face-to-face -face teaching and learning activities plus one week uh, semester break plus one week of revision plus two weeks of final examination. This is in normal circumstances. Normal condition when you are in the faculty. However, during this uh, pandemic COVID-19 um, crisis, what we uh, we are converting the face-to-face -face teaching and learning activities of 14 weeks to online session, face-to-face -face online session, uh, and so on. So please make sure that you know the mode of the uh, of each courses that you take. Because it might differ from one course to another during this pandemic uh, situation. Eh? But please be aware of that. An academic calendar of 2020-2021 session as follows. You can refer to your um, registration kit as well. There are, there are um, dates uh, provided there. But at this stage, what you should be aware of perhaps a change of course registration. Maybe cause some courses that you need to change. Uh, you need to modify what you have registered and without penalty, it should be um, before uh, uh, November 1st. Eh? And late registration with, uh, without penalty as well is on, on uh, at the end of the, on, on October. Eh? So please be aware of the change uh, of the date. It might change, so please keep abreast with what is happening uh, around the university even though you are remotely connected to the university uh, please be aware join groups or whatsapp groups telegram groups to get the latest update uh, uh, during this uh, pandemic crisis 
um, for student withdrawal, only applications received within the first two weeks that the tuition fees will be refunded. New students, however, are not allowed to postpone studies and change of the program. Uh, um, if you enroll in, uh, for example, Bachelor of Aerospace Engineering, you want to change the program, you are not allowed to do so uh, for this first semester. Eh? LX package, English, English Language Experience Package. For, undergraduate, uh, for UPM undergraduate students is offered by the Center of for the Advancement of Language Competence or CALP we call it. Anything regarding LX package um, should be um, provided by the uh, by, by the Center uh, by CALP but you need to make sure that you are enrolled into the right LX package. For more information, you may need to contact your department to, because for this uh, English language package, it depends on your uh, MUET as well, MUET results. Huh? So these are the great and great points that we use at the university. Uh, you can have a look here. The great, uh, it is based on CGPA systems. That means the great points uh, will be given to each grade. For example, if you get A, you will get 4. Point, eh? 4.00 so if you maintain 4.00 or grade A throughout all of your courses then you should be able to get four flat. Eh? The main online system that has been used at the University of Putra Malaysia is SMP uh, or we call it a system, system Maklumat Pelajar in Bahasa a Student Information Portal eh? Registration, scheduling, examination, attendance. You should get access to it. If you haven't got your access, please check huh, with the department. Uh, Putra Learning Hub is or Putra Plus, huh, learning management systems. Putra Learning Hub is a portal, but Putra Plus is the system to for your for your courses to run, course management, lecture notes, assignments, teaching evaluation, and so on will be conducted using Putra. Blast uh, through Putra Learning Hub. This is a snapshot of uh, of the student information system or portal that we mentioned just I mentioned just now. Yeah? So you should have your user ID, UPM user ID and password. Putra Blast also we use user ID, uh, UPM user ID and password, UPM ID. So make sure you register with UPM ID first. There are instructions if you enter to Putra Blast or SMP. There are instructions for you to to uh, register um, UPM ID. What SMP uh, has is the academic record, uh, user ID, official record, and records updating. Anything, any information that you want to change regarding your registration should be done through. ESMP as this will be the academic record. Uh, if you change uh, your personal details as well, please inform um, the academic department so that the records can be updated. Uh, of course, your member ID is your metric number and your password is your identity card or passport number. This is initially set up. Yeah? How to check your uh, subject balance or how to know what subject you need to take, you have to refer to this process. But please make sure that uh, every semester that you um, are enrolled to, you get your results and or curriculum structure to refer to. Always ask for curriculum structure from the department eh? and then check uh, manually with your uh, with one and two with your uh, program handbook as well as curriculum structure because the courses may may change uh, the offering of the courses may change from semester to semester and please 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 consult your academic advisor as well eh? keep in touch with your academic advisor uh, because you uh, each one of you will be assigned to an academic advisor and then check your um, courses uh, subject or courses. Eh? and follow the study program. Teaching and evaluation. Okay. This teaching assessment, uh, normally you use, teach, uh, you have to conduct teaching assessment for the lecturers 
to uh, in order to evaluate the performance of your lecturers as well as the laboratory facilities for both undergraduate, undergraduate and postgraduate courses. And these are conducted twice every semester from week 4 to week 6 and week 9 to week 11. Uh, this is done through online Putra Learning Hub, learninghub.upm.edu.my and you can choose OSCAR module. OSCAR means Online Survey Collaborative and Reports. This is where you evaluate the performance of the lecturers and the technician that uh, that help you with the laboratory. Yeah? Teaching assessment uh, implementation, the first evaluation is optional. Uh, so, And the second evaluation is compulsory to all students. Please help. Uh, the teaching assessment implementation that means you are giving marks or you are evaluating your own lecturer so that uh, they know where to improve eh? this is a screenshot of Putra Learning Hub where the OSCAR module is it is on the, um, the web and you can see the teaching assessment online practical survey online depth survey and blended learning report this is for lecturers but the one that is concerned for you is that the uh, teaching assessment as well as um, online lab survey and online survey. Number six, industry and community relations. Um, just give you some idea what we do at the faculty in terms of student mobility. Means that you you um, uh, normally done, uh, but it is a challenging now that we have the pandemic crisis that the mobility program will have to be um, changed a bit. Uh, normally, uh, you can you can you can apply for exchange program at other university at other countries for one or two semesters, short term program two to four weeks, internship program outside and overseas as well two weeks to six months, industrial training or research two weeks or more, visit uh, to other universities uh, overseas less than in less than two weeks. Uh, we have been doing this for quite some time and we have been very popular in terms of. Um, inbound students and and our students also are going out uh, outbound to other universities to have uh, some experience of learning at other university overseas. Yeah? So far it's very uh, challenging for us to do mobilities since a travel ban and so on and during this pandemic crisis we, we, um, we managed to do uh, 20 students inbound uh, coming to UPM to have experience before the PKP time. So um, the inbound mobility program means that the students from other universities come to came to our university uh, to have experience here from Kunming University of Science and Technology, China. We have uh, also students from Chengde Medical University. Uh, some some of the pictures are shown here. Uh, this is outbound means our students going up to other universities. Uh, together, uh, say for example, Universitas Prawijaya Malang, Indonesia. So our students went there to have some experience. Uh, another outbound mobility uh, two years ago, University of Technology Brunei. So the students' bodies, uh, the department can also arrange this mobility program. Eh? Uh, another one, uh, Chantau University, Vietnam. University Gajah Mada, Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia. Uh, University, Kunmin University. Also, our students also um, visit Kunmin University. So, Kunmin University students come here. And uh, our students also uh, went to the university in China. So, number seven. Pretty important on student bodies. Uh, we we our students, you, to participate in student clubs. Uh, this is the Persatuan Mahasiswa Kejuruteraan Pemaju which the, which means the Engineering Student Society uh, as whole at the faculty level uh, and recognized by the uh, university and under Pemaju, under the uh, Student Society, um, Engineering Student Society, there are several other societies depending on the uh, department eh, and as well as interests. We have Aerospace Society, Eros, um, Civil Engineering Society Club, CESC, Malaysian Society of Agricultural Engineers Student Chapter, MSAE, Institute of Electric and Electronic Student Branch, IEEESB, Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering Club, um, M Squared EC, Chemical Engineering Student Society, CHES, uh, Process and Food Engineering Club, PROFEC, 
as well as Computer and Communication Systems Engineering Club, uh, which is CCSE. These are based on uh, departments. And we have another one interesting, which is UPM Robotic Club, which is based on the students' interests. Yeah? So you are welcome to join the clubs here and be active in your club because uh, this is a good platform for you to, to, um, to be involved in co-curriculum activities as well. There are a few associations and club established as I mentioned just now. So there are quite a number of uh, activities depending on the department that you may uh, join. Eh? And cross department as well, not just de uh, department dependent, but also cross department, cross discipline. On student affairs, um, we have alumni network at the faculty and we always work closely with our alumni uh, for various programs. Scholarships obtained uh, from uh, many different um, institutions and agencies. We would like to wish uh, thank you to all the um, sponsors. And once you graduate from your engineering programs in four years, don't forget, don't forget to register uh, with the Board of Engineers Malaysia and join professional societies such as IEM and also perhaps which is a good society for us, which is Malaysian Society for Engineering and Force Engineering and Society uh, and Technology Mindset. Eh? So that's all. This is our web, and thank you very much.